In this video, we're going to explain why these two pieces of code do not return the same output. So to show you that I'm not actually just making this up, let me run this piece of code. And you can see here that case number one, where A and B are a thousand, A equals B returns false. And case number two, where A and B are a hundred, A equals B returns true. So let me break down in this video why this is the case and how this works under the hood. So first, let's start with a basic example where we just take int a equals 1000 and int b equals 1000. Now, if we print this a equals b, this will obviously return true. So let's validate that. So yes, you can see here case n, which we just added, returns true. Now, if we, even if we change these numbers to like 100, this still returns true. So in the case of primitive data types, the values, as long as they're equal, no matter what the value is, it always will return true when you do a equals b, as long as the values match. Int is a primitive data type, so in primitive data types, they're kind of like raw types. So in the case of raw types, whatever the case, as long as they're equal, they'll match. Now, let's break down why these two behave differently, right? So what actually happens under the hood when you create integer a equals a thousand is it actually creates an object, right? So it says integer a equals integer dot value of thousand. That's what this syntax actually translates to internally in Java. And this value of basically creates a new object of the integer class. So similarly, when we do integer b, it will create a new object. Now, if you know from Java, when we create objects, two different objects will not be the same, right? Because this is a separate object, and this is a separate object. So when you do the reference equality, they're not going to be the same. So if you run it over here, you'll see that yes, it is indeed false in this case n, because we created two separate objects. So that explains this, why this returns false. But now you might be wondering, why does this return true? Like if we say, if we create two values of 100, why does this one say true for case n? right and the reason is because if you look at the source code of value of it actually has an internal cache where if the value is in between i think it's negative one to seven to one to eight it will reuse the object that it created so in this case when we in invoke integer dot value of 100 it will create an object of type integer for this value 100 and cache it. And so the next time when you call integer.value of 100, because it's the same, it will return the previously created value. And that's why this is equal. But when the range is out of this one to seven, negative one to seven to one to eight, like in this case, it always creates a new object. And that's why you see that this returns false. Now we can get a little sneak peek into the integer value of class implementation to see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I used my IDE to open up the source code of the integer class. And you can see here if i is within this low and high range, it just returns it from cache. Otherwise it creates a new integer, right? And this cache uh, low and high values, you can see it's negative 128 to 127. So I hope this video was informative for you. Subscribe, like, and see you in the next one. Cheers.